Recently, I experienced Apple's Vision Pro, and the most impressive for me was its realistic real-time virtual environment. Inspired by this, I created this virtual environment. The good news is that Apple's developer channel provided a brief introduction to the creation process of this realistic virtual environment, giving me a general idea of how to create it. However, the bad news is that they didn't explain the details. While working on this small scene, I encountered issues that took up much of my time. I will break down the entire process and the challenges I faced. If you're also interested in creating your own Vision Pro environment, this series of videos will be engagement. This is my scene before baking. Let's take a look at the overall structure of this scene. There's a house, an external sky box, and two transparent planes for casting leaf shadows. That's the basic layout of the scene. Next, let's discuss the materials. In terms of materials, there are purely texture-based materials, PBR materials, and strictly color-based materials. The scene mainly consists of these three types of materials. The final rendering result is quite good, so the materials are kept simple. Let's look at the lighting setup. Now it's a daytime rendering. I've created both a daytime and a nighttime rendering. The differences mainly lie in the ambient light. The light source outside the windows and the sky box visible through the windows. Switch to the night rendering. This is how I achieve two different renderings in one scene. Now let's talk about why I added an additional area light and look at the difference with and without it. When this area light is present, the most obvious improvement is in the shadows cast by the small table and the bed. It makes the light and shadow levels of this scene richer and more realistic. Next, I'll handle the grouping of models. This grouping is done according to the method introduced in the Apple Developer Channel. The groups are floor, wall one, wall two, wall three, ceiling, and two groups for props. The purpose of making groups is twofold. First, to manage the models in the scene. Second, since the renderings of each model group will be baked onto a texture, it's important to allocate appropriate pixels to each model to ensure consistent pixel proportions. Before baking, I need to handle the UVs. Models need to have UVs, and those UVs must not overlap for baking. It's particularly important to note the models with purely material types. For instance, this model may not have UVs or overlapping UVs, so the UVs used for baking must be unwrapped. So this group's UV looks like this. The baking will use this UV layout. Next, I will assign a UV for each group of models and then we can start baking. For baking, I'm using an add-on I developed myself, but you can also bake manually or use other add-ons. If you're interested in my add-on, you can check out this video. Finally, I bake both daytime and nighttime renderings, resulting in two sets of textures. Next, I will discuss how to increase the baking speed because baking took me a lot of time at the beginning. These models' UVs are ready. I will bake these models to test the baking speed using my baking add-on. The baking principle of this add-on is the same as Blender's built-in baking. Add models. Modify the names of the baked texture. Use GPU baking and open the cycle's rendering hardware settings. Generally, we think that using both CPU and GPU baking at the same time is faster than using either one alone. Let's test to see if this is true. Okay, let's start baking. You can see the CPU and GPU usage here. It is obvious that the CPU usage is always high, while the GPU usage remains at a very low level. My graphics card is a NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super. Let's wait a moment to see how long it takes to bake with both CPU and GPU enabled.
baking is complete. The time for baking with both CPU and GPU is about 17 minutes. Now, let's reset the time and uncheck the CPU to bake once more. You can pay attention to the GPU usage. Okay, it took about 6.5 minutes. It's clear that only using the GPU for baking improved the speed by about three times. If you have a large number of baking tasks, remember to only select the GPU for baking.